Hello from Arcto. This video is a summary of the demo that was presented at Google Ganeticon 2016 in Dublin. The video consists of two parts. In the first part, we are going to demonstrate how to move a VM between two Ganetic clusters using our ROC gateway. In the second part, we are going to present the Ganetic disk as a VMware VMDK and start a new VM out of it. To showcase the above, we simulate two distinct data centers, one in Europe and one in the United States. We have two Ganetic clusters, one on the first data center and one on the second. We can see ROC GNT2 on the lower left and ROC GNT3 on the lower right side respectively. We'll talk about the upper windows later. The first Ganetic cluster has two physical nodes and three VMs running, test 1, test 2 and test 3. Now we're going to connect to test 3 console via VNC. Here is the VM's console, we log in as root. It runs a basic Debian installation and has one virtual SCSI disk. Here we'll simulate working on the instance and writing stuff to disk. We create a test file with some random contents. Let's go back. We can see that this VM has one disk of size 2GB of disk template X with our custom ROC provider. And now let's focus on the upper window. This is the landing page of the first data center. From now on we are going to refer to it as the ROC gateway. We can see an empty bucket inside. Let's think that the bucket is where files or disks will appear. We are going to register an external resource with a ROC gateway within this bucket. Let's mention here that ROC supports most of external services such as VMware, Docker or OpenStack. In this demo, the external resource is a disk of an existing instance in a Ganetic cluster. Let's specify this resource using all the required parameters. Perfect, we just registered a Ganetic disk with a ROC gateway. Here we see info about the registration event. Now let's go back to the file list. We can see the new file we just registered. And if we go back to the bucket list, we can see that our previously empty bucket now has one file in it. It's time to go to the second Ganetic cluster on the right side of the screen. It has two physical nodes, but there are no VMs running. Let's go to the ROC gateway on the second data center. There are no buckets here. What we'd like to do now is move the VM from the first Ganetic cluster to the second. To do so, it would be great if we could have the bucket on the first data center appearing on the second data center. Let's do it. We go back to the ROC gateway of the first data center and we publish the bucket that we created previously. We are going to use our internal indexer for this purpose. Indexer is our global meeting point to exchange bucket references. So by publishing a bucket, we create a unique reference for it that other gateways can subscribe to. Let's see what the indexer looks like. There are several public buckets. Let's find our previously published bucket. Here we are. We can see the link that we used to publish the bucket. Let's get this link and go to the gateway of the other data center. We are going to create a new bucket and subscribe it to the indexer link we just got. Now the second data center is pulling the contents of the bucket from the first data center. Don't forget that the contents reflect to a Ganetti disk. Done, the bucket is there. Inside there is the disk that we registered before. Note that this disk currently lives only in the gateway and the second Ganetti cluster is totally unaware of it. We are going to use the underlying FISC and create a new instance of disk template ext and pass the FISC as origin to our ROC ext provider. In a nutshell, the origin will be thinly cloned and we will end up with a VM identical to the one that was registered in the first place. This could be a case of disaster recovery, a case where a production dataset is handed to a test and dev environment or the most common Ganetti scenario, that is export and import of a Ganetti instance between two distinct data centers. Done in a few seconds. Imagine that you are working in Europe and your desktop is in a local data center and you take a plane to the States and your desktop is waiting for you there with a minimum effort. Let's see our new VM. We use VNC to connect to its console, log in and our test file created in Europe is now available in the United States. To spice things up a bit, we are going to let VMware join the game. In the second data center, we have a vCenter up and running, managing a bunch of VSXI servers. Currently, there is no VM running. For anyone who is not familiar with vCenter, storage is exported as data stores that hold a local VMFS5 file system, 
or in our case backed by a Vivol data store via a VASA storage provider. Here we have already registered the ROC VASA provider that exports a Vivol data store named ROC Vivol. Currently ROC Vivol is empty. Let's go back to the gateway. In contrast to Ganetti, VMware supports handling of individual disks. So we are going to present the file inside the bucket as an external resource on the VMware service, that is a VMware VMDK. Now we have to pass some access credentials for the vCenter and specify some info about the storage provider, in our case Rockvasa. Don't forget we expect the Ganetti disk to be presented as a VMDK inside our Rockvivo data store. The presentation was successful and we can see some related information. If we go back to the file, we can see that a presentation event has been added. Let's see if everything went as expected from the vCenter point of view. We go to vCenter and refresh Rock Vivo. We can see that a Ganetti folder appeared containing a VMDK named Ganetti Disk 0. Now let's add a new virtual machine using this disk. We just follow the typical procedure. But as far as the VM's disk is concerned, we use an existing VMDK, specifically the one that was previously presented. Remember that this exists in the Rock Vivo data store. Ensure that everything is as desired and finalize the creation of the VM. The VM is ready, let's power it on. Perfect, the VM is up and running. Now let's access its console and log in. We expect our test file to be available so we can read it. Remember that this VM used to run on a Ganetti cluster in the first data center, then moved to a Ganetti cluster in the second data center, and then appeared on the VMware platform transparently. Again our test file is there. Think of what we have just experienced. A VM running on a Ganetti cluster in one data center, backed by one storage installation, instantly snapshot it and move to another data center, instantly cloned into VMware's vCenter, backed by a different storage installation. The migration took place seamlessly, not only between the two hypervisors, but also between the underlying storage of the two data centers. That's all for now, thanks for watching. Visit us on aricto.com and find out more about Rock.